Uh, John Yang. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to follow up on Julie's question and uh, press you a little more on Syria. You, how will you d uh, distinguish your policy and your actions on Syria from the inaction that you criticized of the, of the previous administration? You say it's now your responsibility. What should we see or what should we look for that will be different? And Your Majesty, I'd like to ask you, what, what gives you, this is now your second meeting with the President, what gives you the optimism that, uh, that Mr. Trump uh, will succeed in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict where so many and others have failed uh, before him to be a broker for peace? I like to think of myself as a very flexible person. I don't have to have one specific way, and if the world changes, uh, I go the same way. I don't change. Well, I do change. And I am flexible, and I'm proud of that flexibility. And I will tell you, that attack on children yesterday had a big impact on me. Big impact. That was a horrible, horrible thing. And I've been watching it and seeing it, and it doesn't get any worse than that. And I have that flexibility, and it's very, very possible. And I will tell you, it's already happened that my attitude toward Syria and Assad has changed very much. And if you look back over the last few weeks, there were other attacks using gas. You're now talking about a whole different level. So, as you know, I would love to have never been in the Middle East. I would love to have never seen that whole big situation start. But once it started, we got out the wrong way, and ISIS formed in the vacuum and lots of bad things happened. I will tell you, what happened yesterday is unacceptable to me. Can I follow up, sir? You, yes, last year, you seemed to be reluctant to get involved or to intervene in Syria directly. Is that one thing that's changed after yesterday? Well, one of the things I think you've noticed about me is militarily, I don't like to say where I'm going and what I'm doing. And I watched past administrations say, we will attack at such and such a day, at such and such an hour. And you, being a warrior, you would say, why are they saying that? And I'm sure you sat back in Jordan and you said, why are they saying that? I watched Mosul, where the past administration was saying, we will be attacking in four months. And I said, why are they doing that? Then a month goes by and they say, we will be attacking in three months, and then two months, and then we will be attacking next week. And I'm saying, why are they doing that? And as you know, Mosul turned out to be a much harder fight than anyone thought. And a lot of people have been lost in that fight. I'm not saying I'm doing anything one way or the other, but I'm certainly not going to be telling you as much as I respect you, John. Thank you. Um, sir, um, I, I think um, on behalf of the President, um, what I saw was an early engagement by uh, the President and his team with all of us on the re in the region uh, about the challenges between the Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, I had the honor of seeing uh, the President uh, and uh, his team again in January, uh, where this was uh, discussed. Uh, the President understands the nuances and the challenges. I think he has the courage and the dedication to be able to do this. Uh, like I said uh, before, all of us have a responsibility um, to help the president push us over the finish line. Uh, and so um, his team has been in the region. Uh, they've been talking to all the partners. Uh, and it is our job to facilitate the atmospherics between Israelis and Palestinians to move together and give the support to the president uh, to be able to smooth the edges over between Israelis and Palestinians to achieve this. And the president understands that if we don't solve this problem, how are we going to win the global fight against terrorism, which is his number one priority? So this is a core issue that he understands um, and I think he has the commitment, and he has my full support uh, for this, as he does from many, many countries in our region. And I have to just say that the world is a mess. I inherited a mess, whether it's the Middle East, whether it's North Korea, whether it's so many other things, whether it's in our country, horrible trade deals. I inherited a mess. We're going to fix it.